Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to show you how to replace the thermal paste and these thermal pads on your Xbox One X. And I'm also gonna show you how to clean the cooling system and how to properly disassemble and reassemble your Xbox. Even though this process requires a complete disassembly of the console, it's pretty simple and I'll walk you through the whole thing. You'll need a T9 and T10 Torx screwdrivers, a pair of pliers, some thermal paste, I recommend using Arctic MX4 or Grizzly Cryonaut, and we'll need 1.5mm thick thermal pads. And I suggest using thermal pads from Grizzly, because they provide great thermal conductivity and compressibility. So this is the best stuff on the market that I've tested. Just make sure you buy the original product, I'll put the links down below in the description. So let's go ahead and start by removing these two screws. Then slide the cover forward and lift it up like so. Next we need to remove these 19 screws. Carefully lift the bracket attached to the cable and then disconnect the cable from the RF board. Lift the locking bar up and slide out the ribbon cable from its connector. So the next thing we need to do is take out these two wireless boards. This is basically your Wi-Fi network adapter and this is wireless board for your game controller. Flip the Xbox over and remove the cover and two remaining screws. Now you can remove the metal casing by pulling it upward. Next I'm gonna remove the optical drive. Simply disconnect these cables from the drive or the motherboard. And now you have access to your hard drive or SSD. By the way, I have video about upgrading Xbox consoles to an SSD drive and even to M.2 SATA SSD. It's a very simple process and you don't need any scripts or software. I'll put the links at the end of this video. Ok, now disconnect the power and SATA cables from the motherboard and remove the drive. Next, remove the power supply with its cable simply by lifting it up and out of the case. With that removed, we can now disconnect the fan connector from the motherboard. And then remove the fan assembly itself. Next, we need to remove the motherboard. To do that, simply flip the case over and remove the remaining four screws that are holding the heatsink. Then grab the casing and tilt it slightly upward, like so, and then pull it away from the motherboard. Finally, we need to remove this X clamp, which holds the heatsink. Grab your pliers or small flathead screwdriver and then simply twist these legs, like so, and it pops right off. You have to be careful because there's a lot of tiny components under the clamp. Now flip the board over and gently remove the heatsink. So let's start by inspecting the cooling system. This is the site of the heatsink where all dust and dirt begins to build up. You can use a paintbrush to brush off the dust and then use a can of compressed air or a blower to blow any remaining debris out of the heatsink. Now repeat the same process for the fan assembly. Just give it a good blowout to make sure it's nice and clean. Also try to spin the fan by hand, it should spin easily and freely, if it doesn't I'd recommend replacing the fan, the link down below. So as you can see this thermal paste is already dry and we need to replace it. So first we need to remove the old thermal paste from the heatsink and the APU. Just get a cotton cloth or a coffee filter soaked in rubbing alcohol and wipe away the old compound. Then gently wipe off any remaining residue from the APU. You can also use a Q-tip and a toothpick to remove the remaining paste. Just be careful, you don't want to rip off any components. Next, check if your thermal pads are not damaged or dried out. So if you need to replace them, simply remove the old pads with a spudger and then clean the surface of the heatsink, memory chips and VRM components with rubbing alcohol. Next, cut the pads into uniform pieces or strips, so they could cover the entire surface of the cooling components. And finally place the new pads onto the chips. Thank you. 
Ok, so now I'm going to go ahead and apply the thermal paste. There's a whole bunch of theories about thermal paste application methods and which one provides the best cooling performance. The problem with some methods like the dot is that the thermal paste doesn't spread out evenly. So for this particular model, I recommend using the line or the spread methods. And as you can see, the last method guarantees a nice and even coverage of the APU die surface. So apply the right amount of thermal paste to the chip and spread it evenly without any gaps. You can use a plastic card or an applicator which comes with the paste. Now carefully reattach the heatsink. Then grab the heatsink with your fingers to make sure it doesn't fall and flip the board. Next, we need to install the X-clamp. Line it up and press these legs down, like so, until they lock into place. And now we can replace the thermal pad on the south bridge. It's basically the same process. Remove the old pad, clean the surfaces and apply the new thermal pad. Finally, reassemble your console in the reverse order of its disassembly. And here's the final result. So, after playing for about 40 minutes, I got a max of 67.6 .6 degrees, compared to the 71.5 degrees before the paste replacement. So it's about 4 degrees improvement. This is my room temperature reading, which comes from this thermocouple, and the other one is attached to the heatsink right above the APU chip. So, that's it, I hope it was helpful and thank you for watching.